So the topic for today's discussion is muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm. So uh, in the upper limb, you know that there is a region of arm between the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. Then we have the region of forearm between the elbow and the wrist joint. So we have already covered the muscles of the anterior or the flexor compartment of the arm. Now we will see what are the various muscles they are present in the posterior or the extensor compartment of the forearm. So if you divide these muscle in relation to their uh, in relation to their location in the region of the forearm on the posterior aspect, you will find these muscle are arranged in two aspects. One lies the superficial and in the group of the muscle they lie deep to the superficial muscle. Again, the superficial muscles are again divided into two groups. One, uh, there are certain muscles, they are situated more on the lateral side. They are included in the lateral group of superficial muscle on the posterior compartment of the forearm. Then we have the posterior group of muscles or the superficial muscles or the posterior compartment of the forearm. The deep muscle, they lie just beneath these, this, these superficial muscle. So the lateral group of the superficial muscle, this include uh, three muscle, one is brachioradialis, then we have the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle and the third muscle of the lateral group in the superficial region is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So as the name suggests, extensor carpi radialis longus means the function of this muscle is to produce extension as the carpal that is at the wrist joint. Radialis, it is situated on the lateral side. And the longest, that means the length of the muscle is somewhat larger. Next is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So the function of this muscle is also to produce extensor of the wrist joint. And it is also situated on the radial side, that is on the lateral side. And because the size of this muscle is small, that's why the name include brevis. This term is included into the name of muscle that is brevis. In the posterior group of the superficial muscle or the posterior compartment or the forearm, this includes basically four muscle. The first one is extensor digitorum. Second is extensor digiti minimi. Third muscle is extensor carpi ulnaris. Then we have a small muscle in the posterior group. This is known as anconius. If we talk about the deep muscles or the posterior compartment of the forearm, this include five muscle. The first muscle is supinator. Then the abductor pollicis longus muscle, that means it is producing abduction at the pollex, that means at the thumb, and the size of this muscle is long. Next is extensor pollicis longus muscle. The function of this muscle is to produce extension at the pollex, and the size of this muscle is long, that is why the name include longus. The next muscle of the deep group of the superfe of the posterior compartment of the forearm is extensor pollicis brevis muscle. That means it is producing extensor and the pollex that is thumb. And the size of this muscle is small. That is why the name is includes brevis. Then we have fifth muscle in the deeper group of the posterior compartment of the forearm. This is known as extensor indices muscle. Indices is some related to the index finger. And the function of this muscle is to produce extension. Now we will see the detail of each muscle on the posterior compartment of the forearm. So first we will see the first muscle that is brachioradialis. So in this diagram, if we talk about uh, the lateral, uh, let's have uh, orientation of this uh, joint, the elbow joint and the wrist joint. You can see this is the lateral side and uh, this is the lateral side and this is the medial side because you can see here this is the first metacarpal, this is the second metacarpal, then third, fourth and fifth metacarpal respectively. So this region is, this side is lateral side and this side is medial side. You can see here, this is the, on the superior aspect, you will find a bone that is the lower part of the humerus bone. And here on the lateral side, you can see this bone which is known as radius. And on medial side, you will find and the bone that is known as ulna. So, Let's talk about how this brachioradialis is going to be origin from this uh, bone. So brachioradialis is arising from the upper two third of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. If we see the humerus, the lateral border of humerus at its lower aspect, it get very sharp. And this sharp border is known as supracondylar ridge. So this at the lower end, uh, the lower end of the lateral border of the humerus, 
is known as supracondylar ridge because it is situated superior to the condyle. This is the little condyle and this is this elevation, this projection is known as medial epicondyle, medial condyle. So just above the condyle, little condyle, you will find a sharp border of the humerus. This is known as supra, the lateral supracondylar ridge. So this brachioradialis is arising from the upper two-third part of the lateral supracondylar ridge and it is going to insert just above, you can see here, this is the radius bone and this projection of radius bone is known as a styloid process. So just above the styloid process, there is insertion of this muscle which is known as brachioradialis. So it is more clear in this diagram, you can see here, this is the origin point of the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis is arising from the upper two-third of the lateral supracondylar ridge and it is going to insert onto the radius just above the styloid process. So you will find a lateral projection at the lower end of radius that is known as styloid process. Just above the styloid process you will see the insertion of brachioradialis muscle. So this muscle is supplied by the radial nerve. All the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm in general they are supplied by the radial nerve and the function of this brachioradialis is it causes flexion of the elbow joint. So it produces flexion of the elbow joint. This is the function of the brachioradialis. Next muscle is extensor carpi radialis longus. If you see the name of this muscle extensor, I have already told you the function of this muscle is to produce extensor at which joint? At carpus, that means at the level of the wrist joint. Radialis because the location of this muscle is somewhat on the lateral side and the size of this muscle is long. So the name is extensor carpi radialis longus. So it is going to arise from the lower one third of the supracondylar ridge of the humerus. So again, this is the lateral side and this is the medial side of the, uh, you can see the upper limb. So on this lateral side, you will find this is the condyle. This is the lateral condyle. Just above the lateral condyle, you will find a sharp lateral border of the humerus. And this sharp lateral border of humerus is known as supracondylar ridge because it is situated just above the condyle that is why the name given to this ridge is supra means above condylar ridge so the lower one third this ridge have, have the upper from the upper two third there is origin of the brachioradialis from the lower one third there is origin of this muscle that is extensor carpi radialis longus and it is going to insert onto the posterior surface or the base of second metacarpal so you can see here this is the first metacarpal this is second this is third fourth and fifth metacarpal metacarpals are the bone on this palm and hand region where you can find the, there are five metacarpal so this extensor carpi radialis longus is going to insert onto the posterior this is the dorsal aspect you can see here this is we are viewing the uh, the upper limb from the posterior the osteo the bone part of the upper limb from the posterior aspect so it is going to insert onto the posterior surface or base of second metacarpal. So this muscle, after it is arising from the lower part of the supracondylar ridge, it is going to insert onto the base of the second metacarpal. And it is uh, the nerve supply of this muscle is again that is the radial nerve. And the function of this muscle is to produce extension of the wrist in in uh, with uh, which is aided by the extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle. It also produces abduction at the wrist joint with the help of flexor carpi radialis and extensor carpi radialis brevis. So there are two functions of this muscle extensor carpi radialis longus. The prime function or the main function is to produce extension at the wrist joint. Beside this is also called the abduction of the wrist, abduction of the wrist along with the flexor carpi radialis and extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle. So next muscle in the lateral group of superficial compartment of posterior aspect of the forearm is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Again, extensor means it is going to produce extensor movement. Carpi at the wrist joint radialis, it is located on the lateral side. And brevis means the size of this muscle is small. So from where it is going to arise, if you see uh, this diagram again, this is the lateral side and this is the medial side because you can see here, this is the radius bone, this is the ulna bone and also there is the thumb. This is the region of the thumb where you can find the first metacarpal. 
first mid carpal bone so this extensor carpi radialis brevis is arising from the little epicondyle of the humerus so here you can see this is a projection at the lower end of the humerus that is known as condyle that is known as condyle and just above the condyle you will find a small projection again and that projection is known as epicondyle that epi means uh, something above so just above the condyle you will find a smaller bridge suppose this is a uh, this is a larger tubercle which you name as a condyle and just above the condyle you will find a sharp small elevation and that elevation is known as epicondyle so this ecrb or the extensor carpi radialis brevis is going to arise from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is going to insert onto the posterior surface or the base of third metacarpal so again this is the second and this is the third metacarpal. So after its origin from the media, uh, lateral epicondyle, it is going to insert onto the base of the third metacarpal bone. So this muscle is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Again, it is supplied by the branch of the radial nerve. And this is known as posterior introscious nerve. And the function of this muscle is again extension at the wrist. It, uh, it, helps, it uh, helps the extension along with the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor carpi ulnaris. It, it also performs abduction along with the flexor carpi radialis and extensor carpi radialis longus. So this is the function of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now coming on to the posterior group. So I have already told you that superficial group of muscles or the posterior compartment of forearm is divided into group. One is the lateral group which we have covered just now. Next is posterior group. So this posterior group of the superficial layer of the posterior compartment of the forearm muscle contains four muscles. One is extensor digitorum. Next is extensor digiti minimi. Then we have extensor carpi ulnaris and a small muscle that is known as anconius. So all these muscles, they have a common origin that is from the, you can see here, this is the lateral condyle. This is the medial side. And this is the lateral side because you can see the head of the humerus is on the medial side. So you can see here this elevation. This is known as lateral epicondyle. So from these lateral epicondyle, the posterior group of muscle, they are going to arise. So this is basically known as common extension because majority of the muscle, they are going to arise from this point. That is why this point is known as common extensor origin. origin. So it is giving uh, origin to the muscles on the extensor compartment of the forearm so let's see the detail of extensor digitorum muscle so you can see here um, this muscle which is known as extensor digitorum this is going to arise from the, here you can see this is going to arise from the uh, lateral condyle the lateral epicondyle and it is divided into four tendon you can see here this is divided into four tendon here this is the muscle which is known as extensor digitorum so this extensor digitorum at its points or at its point of innervation it is going to give rise four tendon and all these tendons they are going to insert onto the middle and the distal phalanx of the medial four digit if we talk about the digit each digit having three bones smaller bone they are known as phalanx so suppose this is digit this is the suppose this is the second digit or you can see this is the index finger okay so this is suppose this is index finger so index finger or the each digit is comprised of three bones except the thumb so the index finger is having the middle finger the ring and the little finger all all, all are having three smaller bone one and they are known as phalanx they are known as phalanges or the phalanx so uh, one toward the uh, body uh, this is known as proximal phalanx and whatever in the, the part of the phalanges they are lying Away from the body axis, they are known as distal phalanx. In between the proximal and distal, you will find and the small bone. This is known as the middle phalanges. So this extensor digitorum is divided into four tendons. And each tendon is going to insert onto the base of the middle and distal phalanx. And they form a expansion. They form expansion. This is known as dorsal digital expansion. So in this diagram, you can see here. This is the origin of the muscle that is flexor extensor digitorum. It is arising from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is going to insert onto the 
on the middle and the distal phalanx of the medial four digit that is the second third fourth and the fifth digit so you can see here how the tendon is going to insert onto the middle as well as the distal phalanx of the medial four digit it is supplied by the nerve that is radial nerve the next muscle is extensor digiti minimi so here you can see extensor digiti minimi means it is going to produce extension and the, it is it is attached on somewhere at the little finger because the name include digiti minimi that refers to the little finger it refers to little finger so here you can see uh, the tendon uh, this is the tendon of the extensor digiti minimi arising from the common origin of the extensor point that is lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is going to insert on to the extensor expansion of the little finger so here you can see this is the tendon of the extensor digiti minimi and it is going to uh, going to insert on to the extensor expansion of the little finger so it is supplied again supplied by the radial nerve because all the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm they are supplied by the radial nerve next we have extensor carpi ulnaris more toward the ulna side that means it is more situated mostly situated on the medial aspect of the posterior compartment of the forearm and it is arising from uh, lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is going to insert onto the medial side of the base of the fifth metacarpal so this is the first second third fourth and this is the fifth metacarpal so you can see here this muscle is uh, this muscle is extensor carpi ulnaris this extensor carpi ulnaris after arising from the common extensor origin that is from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus it is going to insert on to the on to the base of the fifth metacarpal so this is the uh, metacarpal bone and uh, fifth metacarpal and it is going to insert on the base of the fifth metacarpal so this is the insertion point and this is the point of origin of that extensor carpi ulnaris again it is supplied by the radial nerve and the function of this muscle is to produce extension as well as adduction so it also causes ex uh, extension as well as adduction next we have anconius muscle in this diagram you can see here a small muscle over here and this is known as anconius it is arising from the common extensor origin that is from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is going to insert on to the ulna bone that is on the lateral surface of the olecranon process if you see the ulna the upper part of the ulna is having a projection this is known as olecranon process olecranon process so on this olecranon process you will find some surface in the superior surface the posterior surface the lateral as well as the medial surface so on the lateral surface of this olecranon process there is insertion of this muscle that is anconius and it is again supplied by the radial nerve so the let's see the function of uh, each muscle or the posterior aspect of the uh, of the forearm that is situated superficially so the function of extensor digitorum is it extends finger and hand so it extends finger and hand so it is because it is attached on the distal middle and the distal phalanx of the medial four digit so it causes it causes extension this causes extension on the finger and before this is crossing the and this is crossing the wrist joint so it also produces extension of the hand that means extension of the wrist joint next is extensor digiti minimi so the extensor digiti minimi is producing it extends the metacarpophalangeal joint of the little finger because it is related to the digiti minimi means it is related to the little finger so it produces uh, extension of the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the little finger the next muscle is extensor carpi ulnaris it causes extra it causes extension and adduction it causes adduction as well as extension of the hand and the wrist joint and conius it causes extension of the elbow joint so this is all about the uh, the posterior uh, posterior group of muscle they, which are situated superficial in the posterior compartment of the forearm now coming to the deep muscle or the posterior compartment of forearm it is comprised of five muscle and we can name it by supinator then abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and the fifth muscle is extensor indicis so let's see how from where they are going to arise the first muscle which you can see here is the supinator so supinator is arising from the common extensor origin of the humerus that is from the 
lateral epicondyle of the humerus and beside this it is also arising from the annular ligament of radio ulna joint and also from the ulna so you can see here the supinator is arising from the humerus it is arising from the radius and also from the ulna and it is going to attach on the neck and shaft of the radius so it is going this is the radial side so it is going to attach on the neck and the shaft of the radius and is supplied by the deep branch of radial nerve and the function of this muscle because you know the name is supinated that means it is going to produce supination of the forearm so this is the pronation and this is the supination and this pro uh, supination is done by the muscle that is supinated and this is how uh, and this muscle performs uh, its work next is abductor pollicis longus muscle so you can see here this muscle po abductor pollicis then longus means it is going to produce abduction at the pollex means thumb and the size of this muscle is long so this muscle what you are seeing here this is abductor pollicis longus so it is arising from the posterior surface of the shaft of the radius this is the radius and this is the ulna and it is going to insert onto the base of the first metacarpal so here you can see this is going to insert onto the base of the first metacarpal bone and it is supplied by the deep branch of radial nerve and as the name suggests it causes abduction of the thumb and also because it is situated on the posterior compartment so it also produces extension of the thumb next muscle is extensor pollicis brevis means it is smaller in size so it is arising from the posterior surface of the radius you can see here this is the muscle which is smaller in size and this is known as extensor pollicis brevis and it is going to insert onto the base of proximal phalanx of the thumb so you can see here this is the thumb side this is the region of the thumb where you can see the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx so this extensor pollicis brevis is going to insert onto the onto the no, onto the base of the uh, it is going to insert onto the base of the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb and the main function of this is it produces extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb next is extensor pollicis longus it is arising from the posterior surface of the ulna you can see here this is the muscle which is known as extensor pollicis longus it is arising from the ulna bone posterior aspect of the ulna bone and it is going to insert onto the base of the distal phalanx it is going to insert onto the base of the distal phalanx so this muscle you can see here this is the tendon of the muscle that is extensor pollicis longus and it is going to insert onto the base of the distal phalanx and supplied by the deep branch of radial nerve and the function of this muscle is to produce extension and the distal phalanx of the thumb next a smaller muscle is known as extensor indices extensor means the function of this muscle is to produce extension and indices because because it is related to the index finger so it is related to the index finger that is why the name include extensor indices so it is arising again arising from the posterior surface of the ulna the shaft of the ulna you can see here this is the shaft of the ulna from where you can see how the extensor indices muscle is arising and it is going to and it is going to insert onto the extensor or the dorsal digital expansion of the index finger because this is the region of the thumb or the first digit this is the second or the index finger so it is going to insert onto the dorsal digital expansion of the index finger and again it is supplied by because it is situated deeply so it is supplied by the deep branch of radial nerve and the function of this muscle is to produce extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger because it is crossing the the metacarpophalangeal joint that is why it produces extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint so this is all about the muscles or the posterior compartment of the forearm so here this is a summary of the deep muscles of the back on the forearm where you, we have seen the supinator which is a small uh, muscle then we have the abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices all the muscles are supplied by deep branch of radial nerve and they have main and the main function of these muscles is to produce extension but if you uh, if you see the supinator the uh, it provides supination abductor pollicis longus 
beside uh, extended uh, extension of the thumb it also produces abduction so that's all about the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm next we will discuss about the uh, anatomical snuff box so before going into detail of the anatomical snuff box you just go through these muscles or the posterior compartment of the forearm so thanks thanks for listening and watching